uh, making an improvement on the FPS, slash so showing you the game at all. Maximize that, drag it down to the bottom. And I think we should be good. Alright, definitely didn't uh, remember to uh, do any of the updates on any of the overlay stuff, so that's all going to be wrong as well. In fact, let's just turn the uh, slideshow off because that's going to be completely useless because I completely forgot to do this. Alright, let's do this then. Top right hand, uh, top left hand side of the map, Proxy Hatching in the start of this game. Our red Zerg player from Team Expert is Bly. Still with his on fire tag here from last season of the Team League. As we have to the top right hand side of the map, our blue Terran player. In this best of seven all kill series, it is going to be Rio. A match which, honestly, when I saw the lineups, I really did think we'd be going into the. Um, I really did think we'd be going into a uh, kind of a match where both players had already kind of won their first series of the season, going into this week two matchup, and that this would be super interesting and what have you. But actually, we have already kind of a big upset where, again, True Esports lost their match last week to Romandy Gaming. Huge upset. And that's already going to be really kind of setting up some interesting storylines in this group. But I started up the Rotron again to Proxy Hatchery. So, you know, he's doing exactly what we expect him to do with a Proxy Hatchery start in the Rotron. And seeing where he can go to. And we're just going to be seeing the uh, Cancer just uh, on the way up over here. So, Cancer on the way up and, uh, again, Ryong knows about it approximately right now. Seasonal no natural CC, or natural hatchery, sorry. And he's going to hop on up in towards the main base to continue having a uh, little bit of a scout around. So we're going to be seeing that road draw in here in the back. Ryong does click on that there, does see it. Now we're going to see a couple of these Zerglings just moving forwards up this ramp. You can see this uh, Zergling going to start nibbling away at that uh, wall for a moment or two. And so we're just get rid of a couple of these Zerglings. So a couple of Zerglings going down. Roach is on the way up, though, as uh, Ryong, he's seen this now, right? Yeah, he's seen the creep, so he knows what's happening. Gonna actually build a road, uh, bunker at the front to hold this. I'm gonna come forward with this Reaper to just try and see what he can do. Maybe drop a grenade, slow the Roaches down just a little bit. Any little bit of, you know, any little bit of piece he can do to slow this down can definitely help. Especially wants to try and hold a CC and let that finish. So he can have the CC finish rather than cancelled, which is a pretty big deal in this. As he pulls away, I think he's bought enough time. It's gonna be close. Oh, just gets it. I see if he's going to pull down this ramp. He wants to finish that bunker. But actually, the Reaper goes down already. And these Marines, well, they are going to start coming down right now. One of these Marines trying to get in the bunker. Doesn't make it, though. And Ryong is in a lot of trouble right now. As more Roaches on the way up. I think Bly's already actually just done enough damage. Killing seven workers. Killing these Marines into the main base. GG. Well, that is not exactly the way Ryong wanted to debut for True Esports in the Wardy TV Team League, I don't think. That was Erica's one. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day... It gives the American players a chance to play on their own server in the Team League. And if they don't necessarily, you know, if you look at it and like, oh, you know what, I don't really, um, you know, if you if you look at it and you say, hmm, well, I don't want to, um, you know, I'm trying to think what to say. I can't, I can't say. I just can't get the words out of my mouth. I'm sorry. If, if players like Koreans suddenly want to play in the Americas one, that's fine. Or the Europeans do, that's fine because they're playing on the NA server. They're playing at the NA time zones. And it brings the competition to the American players where they can play on their home turf. And uh, play on their home turf and uh, still play against others. Anyways, I need to shut up. I, need, I really need to shut up. Let's um, let's do this. We have um, our red time player to the south side from True Sports. It's Soul. Finally, I'm getting some words out of my mouth. Finally getting there. As we have to the top side of the map, our Blue Zerg player, Hatch Pooling. But of course, with the Hatch across the map, it is Bly. So let's see if Seoul can make a bit of a better defense here than uh, <laughs> than Ryong did in game number two of this uh, series now as we set up and look to see where we're going to be going. It's going to be seeing the um, Rax obviously on the way up. And again, for now, he doesn't scout. So a big part of this is figuring out that it's coming so he can prepare against it, build the bunker and whatever else. Now, it is Varney. So on Varney, you naturally kind of hold the high ground and your CC comes in over here. So that's a big advantage. Bly this time around might actually just add spine crawlers on to push the front and push down these depots though. So that's a possibility as well. For now, just going to be Roaches though. So it's going to be Roach Ravager then to uh, burst on through. Last time he never actually made any Ravages, but I imagine this time he will because the corrosive Bards will be quite important in terms of trying to continue getting rid of the um, depots and so. And so, I love the fact he's... Uh, oh, I was about to say, I love the fact his uh, Reaper's rallied up that way. You might actually see the proxy hatch. He will see the proxy hatch as he comes down, I think. You'll see the edge of the creep spread. 
And so Soul knows what this is immediately, and he'll still send the Reaper across the map, which is interesting. But the reasoning behind that is generally Bly is going to make everything over here. Even his first Queen is generally going to come up on the proxy hatchery, the Roaches as well. And so if there isn't any units at home, there isn't going to, you know, he his Reaper can do quite a bit. Unfortunately, these Zerglings counterattack, and that means that he is going to have to turn around and with the Reaper slow this down. Reactor building on the barracks, and now factory builds up behind this as well. And I do wonder if, um... I do wonder if, um, sort of Soul wants to, uh, I, I don't know really, like, it's sort of a weird one. He's actually got a second Rax already. I was going to say maybe some Cyclone production could be pretty cool with this. This uh, bunker can continue taking some damage. SCVs will pull in because I think he wants to finish this. I think the bunker is uh, pretty important to him here. Nice grenade will buy him a bit more time. And there we can see now the uh, bunker will just get repaired up. So he's going to start repairing this. And uh, two more Marines coming out as well. They can jump in the bunker also. This is where the Ravagers come in a bit more useful because that's when you can start picking away at these SCVs, pushing them back, hitting the bunker down a bit more quickly. And the Scrozzle Bars do a lot of damage. SCV is going to stay pulled over to try and help out. Marauder on the way as well. I love the Marauder because Marauder has that extra little bit of range against these uh, against these Roaches. And also, I mean, the damage against Roaches from the Marauder is pretty great as well. And we've seen this uh, yeah, bunker over here is going to go down, is it? It's going to be very close. Grenade comes in to try and help. Not quite enough, and so he will lose this depot to the left side. Now his barracks here on the reactor, taking some heavy damage as well. Five Ravages in total very soon, as the next two Roaches morphing into Ravages as well. Factory has finished up with a tech lab on it, but, I mean, if he starts Siege Tanks, he has to be very, very cautious still, because even with Siege Tanks on the way, you know, tanks go down so quickly nowadays to these uh, Corrosive Bars, because they can't be lifted, they can't be kited around in Medivacs, and so life is a lot more difficult than you would... Uh, than you would think, because we're going to see these SCVs coming forwards and trying to stay surrounded on this uh, bunker here. Going to be seeing a few corrosive bars going down, backs away. There's just so many bars that he gets rid of these bunkers so quickly. I think Soul's already lost too much. Why does no one ever know how to shut down this proxy hatchery play? Ever? <laughs> well, Soul, he's lasted about a minute longer than Ryung has so far, but it really isn't looking promising. That barracks goes down, he pulls SCVs, forwards the bar. Marauder's gone as well already. Oh man, I mean, the tank's about to come out, but really, what's it going to do? Is it going to do anywhere near enough? I don't think so. And Bly's proxy hatch for the second game in a row is going to be good. He just has to drop some bows onto the siege tank, and he wins this game, more or less. There we go. Bows drop down. SCVs will die afterwards, and so he's going to be having to type on out. True esports are not having a good season. I'm just going to say it. It's week two, and true esports are not having a good season. You know? They are a team who should be pushing teams like Expert past their first player. Who should be pushing to force like 4-3. You know, even if they lose against a team like Expert, because they probably are, you know, they are the underdogs against Expert. Let's see if they can get this rolling for themselves right now. We have to the top right-hand side of the map. His team 0-2 down in this best of seven. The green Zerg player representing True Sports. It is Raynor. And down to the lower left-hand side from Team Expert, our red Zerg player, it is Bly. Called Acer Bly because that's what his battle tag is right now, I think. If I am not mistaken. So, uh... So, yeah. That's, uh... Kind of what's just going on right now, I guess. We're gonna see a spawning pool dropping down here for Reno. Pull first against the hatchery first of Bly. Oh, guys, it's not a proxy hatchery. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? How crazy. What was the coupon code? The coupon code was WTL Global. WTL Global to add $1 to the prize pool, guys. Again, doesn't cost you anything. Takes about 20 seconds. You're getting an error? Have I really used all the coupon codes already? Oh, we might have just about used up all the coupon codes then. Thank you very much, by the way, Snark Angel, who's actually added um, $6 to the prize pool. Or well, I guess $5 in a coupon code, maybe. Guys, if you get an unknown error, it probably means that we have indeed uh, hit the uh, coupon code max. I didn't realize we'd uh, used all the coupon codes already. Oh. In that case, guys, that's what it is. Well, thank you very much to... Um... Uh, is either that or you guys have already used a coupon code, which is... Yeah, I think you guys that are again an unknown error, it's because you guys have already used the coupon code like last week. So that's probably what the unknown error is. I think we still have more codes, but you can't use it more than once. But yeah, thank you very much, Snog Angel. He does indeed uh, add $6 or $5, whatever, to the prize pool, whatever it is. Thank you very much.
for supporting the Team League. Do appreciate it. Can we get some love in the chat, please, for the additional $6 into the prize pool? And to everyone else who's using those coupon codes as well. So Overlord is still moving around here from Bly. A couple of drones will come down to the low ground from Reno and just begin to mine here over on the natural expansion. So we're going to start mining over here and... Uh, Again, I mean, little bits and pieces of differences in the early stages of the game. Reynold has a couple of lings across the map already. We'll look to see if he can get anything done with these, but I guess it's unlikely. As he jumps on in, he's going to try and chase for the drone kill. Comes a spore killer, doesn't get anything then. And Bly with a slight advantage then by a worker or so every now and then, just from going for the pool for, uh, hatch first instead of the pool first. We've seen a uh, Rotoron coming down here at the front from Bly as well. So Rotoron comes down at the front. Third hatchery coming up from Bly as well to the top side of this now. And this drone down here going to also drop down a hatchery as well. So Reno going into uh, going up to his three hatches right now. Going to be seeing this Bane and Nest coming in from Reno as well. So setting up into a Bane and Nest as well. And, and a few more Zerglings just on the way out currently from our Zerg player. So a few more Zerglings just on the way out. Rotoron coming down from Bly. I'm just going to be seeing a few of these Zerglings of our Zerg player starting to move across the map, or of our Red Zerg player starting to move across the map, and looking to see when he, uh, what he can get up to as these things back away for a moment or two, and then jump back onto those Zerglings there. And Bly still just uh, moving around, and these Lings of Bly are going to come in and actually start attacking down this hatchery, so this hatchery is going to take a lot of damage. And it, uh, honestly, the Reynal has enough Zerglings to help push this away, and so coming up he is going to be able to push those Zerglings away without too much of an issue. Continues to uh, work his way through those catches, one of them. And again, going to push those links all the way back over to the left-hand side. Roach is on the way up from Bly, though. And I mean, he isn't really making too many more drones. So I wonder if he turns this into an aggressive attack of the Roaches. Reno might try and take an opportunity to uh, fight here and uh, surround a couple of these Roaches when they're in lower numbers. As he has more Zerglings still, that's exactly what he's going to do. He picks off one, going to get another one towards the back here. In fact, Reno just has a lot of units in general to work with. He's also got a lot of money on the way in his bank, so he can utilize that here very shortly. The question is, how exactly does he want to use it? Does he try and get this Ravager kill? Killing the Ravager would be huge. He's actually going to keep on fighting these Roaches, and I mean, they're all, all getting low. The Ravager's starting to morph him once again. There goes that Ravager that we morphed in before. Reno has killed a lot, but he has to spend his money. He has to get enough army supply to defend a follow-up attack. A couple of Banes trying to sneak into a mineral line. That's a uh, drone kill of the Zergling follow-up. But now we're going to see Bly with a big counter-attack coming in. 26 army supply to the 11. Raynor has to find a way to spend his money, has to find a way to get rid of these units, otherwise he might find himself in a lot of trouble very, very soon. These links from Blight continue to come over to the right, and they're going to come in, surround this hatchery, and it's starting to go down this hatchery over here. We've really seen uh, links and veins from uh, Bly. Oh no! From Raynor, sorry, coming in. The Banes get good connection, and Bly loses a lot here initially. Well, he didn't actually bring his uh, Ravagers over the map. He actually didn't have many left over, only two of them. I thought he had more roaches. But he does not. He went into drones instead, of course. So, Reno actually holds this off beautifully and actually continue to come over here. Can he kill off these Ravagers? Uh, it's pretty close, actually. Corrosive Bally has to back away from. I think Reno can actually maybe grab these here. He's going to come in. He's going to keep on looking for the surround. More Roaches coming in as well. Uh, uh, Bly's doing a really good job of kind of kiting away with these and using the kind of Corrosive Bally's effectively to make sure those Zerglings have to keep on backing away. So, they do keep on backing away. And I'm just going to be seeing Bly now is... Uh, well, just still on the kind of the back foot. We're going to see Lingus coming forwards again. Now the Ravagers do go down. Zergling still surround the Roaches here. Return will actually try and take down a Queen instead. More Lingus from Bly coming into play. As he uh, is going to be able to turn these Lings around. But again, he's continuing to lose just bits and pieces every now and then. And Reynold, the player of the tech right now. The plus one upgrade for his Roaches are on the way. And that upgrade is so, so vital here. In terms of being able to take a better fight later in this game. So that's going to be super, super important. And as we're going to be seeing the... Uh, Roaches and Lings continue to come up here right now from Reno. Some more Roaches and Lings on the way. A couple of Banes start to morph in too. There's all these Zerglings going to gather together down to the south side and get ready to attack on in towards the third base here. Lings and Roaches from Reno able to come in, push those Lings battle of his opponent back. So those Zerglings do get pushed back right here. And again, we see Bly going into the lair, but no evil chamber. So for Bly, if I had to make a guess, I would imagine this is going to be a Spire dropping down. I mean, why would you make a lair? I mean... Unless he's just going to go Roach speed and just attack with Roaches, but does that make any sense at all? Well, it also doesn't make sense that he's still making Roaches right now if he's going to drop a Spire, I guess. So, it's really kind of interesting as to what you know what is exactly Bly trying to do here. Because he's going to be without an upgrade, but with a Lair, what does he do with the Lair? What does he try and do 
to bring himself back into this a little bit. Because again, with the plus one done from Raynor, he's looking pretty good. He doesn't have a lair of his own, though, so he doesn't have Roach speed. But he's just looking to commit to this one fight right now with kind of Ling Roach, win the game, and just sort of go from there. We see Blythe with a lot of these uh, Ravagers down to the south side. Something which Raynor does see. And he's actually collecting his Roach together just on the watchtower. And there is the Spire, so it is indeed a Spire from Bly. And so time is taking for Raynor. If he wants to go for an aggressive attack, he has to go sooner rather than later. Lings from Bly are going to be running in towards this third hatchery, and it looks as though it's probably going to go down. Response from Raynor is to pull all the way back home with all of his units. I don't know if that's the right decision. He, okay, he's going to keep the Roaches moving across the map. Honestly, his Roaches on their own right now. He'll probably take the fight against his opponent Roaches, and he does lose the third hatchery, but... Has a huge army supply lead to attack across the map with. Nice bidding connection, gets rid of a few more lings. He needs to go though. He cannot wait around much longer. He has to get ready to go and attack in here in the next few moments. Again, use his ling advantage to kind of tank for the roaches. Use that plus one advantage as well. But he has to end this game shortly because he's without a third hatchery. And if he sits down, nine workers for too long, he'll just be dead in this game completely. So here we go. A few roaches of Raynor thinking about trying to attack up this ramp. Doesn't make it so far. Gonna actually run his own lings into the third. Where actually Bly has nothing at all just yet. So Bly, no response to this for now. As he starts to pull his drones away. But already six killed. And actually the third hatch must, might just die here. The thing is though from Raynor still. His opponent's still making that spire. And Mulas are such a difficult uh, set of units to deal with. Does he really want to get into this stage where he's playing against the Mulas? Well, probably not. That said, he's forced a lot of gas-based units out of Bly in terms of defending. And because of that, there's not going to be a lot of Mutalisks on the way up here immediately. Killing uh, uh, seven of these uh, drones as well. And the third hatch will severely impact the gas income of Bly in terms of being able to make enough Mutalisks to be substantial. New Zerglings is going to be uh, joined up together to the top side. Five meters on the way out currently from Bly. Six meters currently on the way out from Bly. Again, these Ling is going to be... Quite a nice little, uh, again, addition in terms of the engagement. So we're just running by whatever they can find. Blair's going to finish allowing uh, Blue Rain. We're going to plus two and also the Roach Speed. Question is, how prepared is he for Mutalis? He hasn't scouted this at all. He's got no idea there's a Spire down on the map. He has no vision on the left-hand side of the map at all. And so he's not going to see these Mutalis for a little while. As Blair just gathers them together in the main base, waiting for a few more before he commits to an attack forwards. And Raynor. Still have a plus one advantage, but not really with enough units to do anything substantial anymore. Wingless going to be getting turned away by these few roaches and ravages that come in towards the third base. And these roaches are rain or pulling back here as well. Bly comes in. He's going to be uh, working his way through with these muters. And uh, rain is just going to type out GG as the muters hit because he's just so unprepared. Bly is going to put and captained by the one and only Rotterdam. Features the players as follows. Nathanius, In Control, Pig, and Todd, and Rotty. Nathanius, In Control, Pig, Todd, Rotty, and the Muslim. Six players, that's their team. Alba, thank you so much for the 12-month resub. 12 months, so you know it's real, boys. What's up, Alba? How you doing? Man, you know what, Alba? I remembered when you subbed the first time. And got a ball on the tree, a decoration on the tree. And guess what? You get a decoration on the tree again. I only have white or silver. I have a glittery silver. I have white or silver. So let me know what color you want. I have white, a glittery silver, or normal silver. Let me know what you want. And you can go back on the tree after one year of subbing. Thank you so much. Can we get some SGI hearts in the chat, please, for Alba? And her 12-month resub. That's intense. That's real intense. She got her one-year badge now as well. She fly. She killing it. <laughs> you like my drawings? <laughs> yeah, I like your drawings, Austin. I was looking at them. I, I sort of laughed because I for a moment I was like, I thought you like, I thought your first tweet was like a joke, and then I looked at them. I was like, oh, I sort of laughing because I was like, oh, they actually look pretty good. So I was, I was, I was like sort of impressed. And laughing at them with impressedness. I don't know. I'm talking shit. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I just shouldn't talk. Because every time I seem to talk, I just seem to talk crap. But I guess if I didn't talk, it wouldn't make me a very good caster. Guys, to the bottom right-hand side of the map, our blue Zerg player is going to be Vincent. Going to get up against Bly, the red Zerg to the bottom left-hand side. He did go for pool base opening six circlings early to try and pressure and do some damage in the early stages of game number one. Uh, game number one, game number four. <laughs> Bly, Frio up right now. Continue to come across the map here with these Zerglings. Going to be running on in towards the natural very shortly. 
And uh, looking to see uh, what's going to happen. So six of these Zerglings moving forwards here. Going to be seeing a couple of Lings coming forwards as well. And uh, looking to see what else is going to be happening. So a little bit of damage being done. A couple of Lings going down already and going to turn around. And we're going to be looking to uh, just see what they can get done. I mean, already some nice little bits of pieces of damage from Bly, which is going to force more units while he just drones up back at home. And uh, he's actually going to get killed in this Queen. So the Queen goes down here. The Queen falls, and already that's some pretty good damage again. I mean, these things are still around as well, so they're having a great time. Five of them still alive. They can turn and fight, take off another couple of lings. They're having a, uh, they're having a really, they're having a really great time here right now. They're having the time of their lives. Fly. This opening always seems to do so much for him. Put him into a good position here early on in game four. Again, he is so close, so close to his all kill right now. So let's see if uh, Vincent can stop him. I mean, can anyone stop this guy? Maybe, again, what happens if he just all kills all season long? What if we actually never get to see Bjorn or Neve or Scarlet all season because we just consistently see this? You know, this monster proxy hatching his way to victory every single series. <laughs> can you imagine? It's crazy. Expert are such a scary team, man. Like, they don't, they're, no one's able to get rid of Bly. Never mind. Neeb and Bjorn and the rest of them. Absolutely ridiculous. Gonna see a lot of Lings from Bly right now. Gonna go and counterattack across the map. And Vincent just doesn't have as much as Bly does. Like, there's no other way to say it. He just doesn't have as much as Bly has right now. Rotoron coming down as well. And as this Rotoron comes on down, I feel as though. Uh, I mean, this is just brutal, right? Bly runs in with just so many Zerglings. He's running around all over the place. He's making a mockery of career esports here today. He really is. Because these games aren't even lasting very long. His match against Reyna was the longest one. That was, what, like 10-ish minutes? And it was the longest one by a huge margin. I mean, Vincent isn't dead just yet. He'll push this back. His Banelands will be good. But I just don't see him holding the follow-up attack. He's six workers down. Bly's making a lot of units. And he's going to attack with a lot of units. He's already ahead in terms of army supplies. So it's uh, looking very, very good right now for... Um, for Bly and for Team Expert. I'm just going to be seeing these a uh, couple of units moving around still from Bly. I'm going to see uh, Vincent as well, just trying to see what else he can get up to. His Ling is still just moving on around. A few roaches on the way up still from Bly as well. I'm going to see him again. I mean, he just gathers. I guess he'll defend these few Zerglings to begin with, and then I guess he'll go and try and uh, move across the map and see what he can do. His third hatchery is much later. He's actually making a few more drones. So maybe he is just looking to be defensive and macro up, but I feel as though this attack has still got so much power behind it. Vincent starts a Roach Warren now. That's why, well, he doesn't move across the map. Okay, there we go. Now he starts to make this sort of movement forwards. And as we're going to be seeing Bly just continuing over to the right-hand side. Curious boards, they've really struggled with consistency, I guess, over the past uh, few seasons of the Team League. And uh, this season does not so far seem to be any different. Queen continuing to work its way through this Overlord. Overlord will give high ground vision and get rid of it as it still goes up to this high ground as well. And we're just going to be seeing Winston with feelings coming out in towards the center of the map once again. Currently making four Overlords. That's generally a good sign at all as Bly is 30 supply up now. And still looking good. A few more Lings continue to pop out. Roach is going to try and pick off a Zergling there in the back. There it goes. Zergling pops down. Doesn't even get much of a scout off towards the main bases. Again, just a couple more Ravagers coming into play. A few more Zerglings coming into play as well from Bly. And he's actually going to collect up together to the northern side and just start working the way through the Zerglings of Vincent. Pushing that back. And again, Bly's been very patient with this. I feel he's been waiting a long time before deciding to actually attack. And his time to attack apparently is now. If he throws a few throws of powers down, we see that Overlord does get picked off. I'm going to be seeing these uh, Zerglings from Bly just going to be uh, still around towards the other side. Trying to pick off another Overlord. He's been very, he has been very patient, and I have to say, he's not teching up at all. I mean, he's determined to just end the game on this sort of composition, this low tech as well. No speed, no plus one, but he still just sat back, waiting to kind of shut down runbys, and still not really moving past the sort of halfway point of the map, just picking off at overlords and whatever else he can find for now. One second, still just, uh... Moving around up here. Hey, drone's getting killed off as Bly actually hits his own run by into the natural expansion. You notice how Bly just, you know, tries to do one run by and it immediately kills nine workers, whereas Vincent has tried multiple times and it's done absolutely nothing. 
Fly has just been in control of this game from the very, very start. There isn't much of another, much of a different way to say it. He's going to come in for this attack now. Well, at the front, he takes down, or gets very close to taking down the third hatchery. He'll get rid of it whenever he wants it to be gone. And he'll get rid of it right now. So hatchery goes down, and well, I mean, he backs away for a little bit, away from the Bruins. We'll see if he attacks in once again. He's got Ling's coming across the map to help. And Vincent still just sat back. Ling Bane Road. He's got a few Banes mixed in here, which would help a lot as well. And the seconds from Vincent going to head all the way up to the top right-hand side. And a few more Lings from Bly coming up in this direction as well, seeing what they can do. But again, 40 supply ahead. What's Vincent meant to do right now? We're going to see Bly taking off these Lings. Again, the run by just completely denied before he even gets off of his own, like, not even half of the map, but his own quarter of the map. Like, these run bys just don't have a chance to do anything. Bly's so on top of all of this. And just sending a few links of his own in towards the main, pulling his opponent out of position. Now he goes into the natural of the rest of his links. GG from Vincent. Bly just looks way, way, way too good here today. Takes the 4-0. And 